Well, good morning. The S&P 500 and the Nasdaq both recently setting new record highs to kick off the month of March. But after choppy trading in recent months and sessions here, I should say, correction concerns are emerging to break down how investors might want to position themselves ahead of a potential pullback. We have Brian Belsky, BMO Capital Markets Chief Investment Strategist. Brian, great to have you here with us this morning. Always looking uh, swagged out as always. Uh, Brian, first and foremost, <laughs> when we think about what this setup looks like going into the economic data this week, and then, of course, yeah, I guess I'll say it, next earnings season as we're kind of rounding out this first uh, quarter of the year with just a few weeks left. Thank you so much for having us. Humbled as always, and good morning, Yahoo. Um, you know, I think people are so focused on this term momentum. And if I hear momentum one more time, there's a little momentum, market momentum. Um, the thing that we have, uh, I think, the most concern about is there's so many people have been late to the party in terms of being bullish, becoming bullish. And whenever the market um, is chasing, whenever most market participants, meaning portfolio managers or strategists or economists, all of a sudden turn bullish, that has us worried. And then the icing on the cake is, you know, the big bull on the cover of Barron's over the weekend. That typically and historically is not a good sign that everyone is kind of chasing things now. So, you know, given the fact that earnings were good and earnings from our perspective are holding the market where they are, actually, in terms of where the market is, we do think that prices are a little bit ahead of themselves. Uh, people probably are not customary to hear that from us, meaning that we're basically labeled as permables all the time. But. We really believe that the market could see a bit of a, a pullback, which would be very normal uh, and very healthy. And then we kind of reset for the end of the year. And we do think we'll see continued new highs uh, the second half of the year. Brian, it's good to see you. So then what, is, what do investors do if they have exposure to the MAG-7? <clears throat> is it just a wait and see type of scenario or should they be looking to reduce some of their positions? Well, we've had, Sean, a nice to see you in here from you. Um, we've, we have the very good fortune of running portfolios for BMO Wealth Management, both in Canada and the United States. And we've taken some off the table in terms of, of some of those positions. And we published about this uh, 10 days ago. You know, for instance, <clears throat> we're going to take a little, we did take a little bit off of NVIDIA uh, just because we've owned the stock for seven years uh, and the stock's had a heck of a run. And we were a little bit more overweight than we wanted to be. And this is kind of classic portfolio management where you still want to maintain positions, but you want to trim here a little bit. This is in this world of yes, no, right, left, green, red. It doesn't mean sell the stock. It just means trim a little bit. And I think that's the kind of um, posture that most investors should be from a longer term perspective to answer your question. I think the tech stocks um, are kind of the consumer staples now. So use the, use the pullback in Apple to add more. Uh, Apple and Microsoft are kind of the consumer staple side of things where really the growth um, is going to be from NVIDIA, let's, let's call it for lack of an AMD. But we do think that Google and Netflix, too, from a communication services standpoint, remain very, very strong in terms of their growth trajectories. But I think the pullback and weakness in Google is a longer term buying opportunity as well. When you think about trimming, as you were just talking about there, and then <clears throat> potentially that profit taking, being able to put some of those profits to work elsewhere in the market, where else do you see some of those hot spots? We think financials <clears throat> is an area that most investors, <clears throat> excuse me, on an institutional perspective are way underweight. Uh, we do think that the Basel Accords will be uh, um, a situation where you're going to see less regulation from the financials, where that could spur and fuel some consolidation, especially within the regionals. So we've long liked uh, stocks like Citigroup, J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, and Goldman. We think investment banking is going to be strong in the second half of the year. But I think where people are missing the most is in value stock and small cap. This is not a call to be overweight value or overweight small cap. We think we need to be adding to positions, we as U.S. investors, because we basically left those areas behind and so much focus is on the Magnificent Seven and tech stocks and growth stocks that we think value in particular is very timely. But small mid-cap stocks from a cash flow perspective, earnings, and some of these names are actually paying dividends, are massively under-owned by investors. So a, a bit of a game of catch-up in the small mid and value, we think, is going to happen over the next 12 to 18 months. Brian, there's been more and more talk just about, obviously about what the Fed is going to do, whether or not the Fed is going or when that first rate cut is going to be. Right now, we know the market's pricing in about three rate cuts before the end of the year. If the Fed, Brian, does not cut before the end of the year, what does that then mean for equities? 
Well, I remember being in your studio and I was teasing you about the Smiths and you know, reminding you that the Smiths was this great band in the 1980s. I was aging myself. But remember, we talked about this. What if the Fed doesn't cut? And we were talking about this in November. Everyone was way too focused on Fed Funds futures this year. Fed Funds futures have been wrong for 14 or 16 months. And so everybody thought we're going to see a cut in March. We didn't see any kind of analytical evidence from from a fundamental perspective on why the Fed would cut in, in, in May. Our great economics department is still saying July. Uh, but, you know, given the fact that inflation will get some prints this week, CPI, and PPI, if it remains a little sticky, the Fed may be on hold longer than people think. And remember, we've, we've reared an entire generation of investors that think they should only buy stocks if interest rates go down. That's not the case. We think interest rates and inflation and earnings growth and market performance in terms of stocks is, is in the process of normalizing. This is year two. So I think we could see some, again, near-term uh, volatility to the downside if the Fed doesn't cut because everybody thinks it should cut, but we don't think it needs to cut. All right, Brian Belsky, we're going to leave it there. We look forward to having you back on Yahoo Finance soon. Vimo Capital Markets Chief Investment Strategist. Thanks, Brian. Thank you.